All right, everyone, hello. Welcome to the 20th anniversary Monster Hunter countdown number 204. Lu Yan Kaku. First appearance should have been Monster Hunter G on the PlayStation 2. It's come back a bit, uh, a lot in second uh, gen, and then in fourth gen, I, I think Kaku got like voted in one of the most popular monsters in Japan. Weird. <laughs> They like him because he's a, they call him like the, the training monster. He's even got a day. Hold on. Let me look it up. September 9th is Kutku Day. <laughs> he's one of the first monsters you fight in Monster Hunter, uh, the original first large monsters. The idea that, you know, he teaches you with your positioning in that game, of, of course, uh, you know, he just spins and shoots fireballs. But, you know, you got to know where to stand when he spins. You want to spin on his, uh, stand on his left, usually. Set is okay. Comes with Crit Eye 2. Marathon Runner. Uh, it points in Critical Draw. So it might be good for a mixed set. Uh, hammer isn't great. But if you use Free Element, it does have a lot of fire. That's something. <laughs> the set, set does have fire attack as well. Uh, as for his hit zones, uh, head, honestly, his wings are a bit better, uh, unless you're going heavy on element, I guess. That's interesting if you're a blade master, uh, with cutting. Otherwise, impact, you know, you want to go for the head pretty much every time. The belly looks like slightly more damage, but probably not worth it. Statuses, um, you know, he's weaker monster, so, you know, sleep and para and stun all seem to scale fairly well older games i feel like the wings were even weaker than in this game sometimes you want to target the wings i mean sometimes you want to target the wings anyways uh simply because it's going to be a lot easier to stand hitting you know the his left wing rather than trying to hit his head especially something with like insect glaive or something like that uh, but otherwise, I mean, in either case, the head is still a, a plenty fine, good hit zone. Uh, fight is good in 4U. Actually, really good. <laughs> I was I was surprised how fun his, his G-Rank fight was. Was very annoying to get the guild quest, but I guess it could have been worse. It was just trying to get blue Kutku. I got it from, I think it was an Emerald Kongalala. There's a whole spreadsheet out there that'll tell you what you need to fight. By the way, this intro sequence here is all the ways that he'll get you. <laughs> That's why he's the teacher. All the ways he'll get you if you try to attack his head a little bit too greedily. Obviously, earlier versions of Kutku weren't this aggressive. But yeah, that little aerial, like, claw into a flying attack? Deceptively powerful. I mean, especially him flying at you does, does quite a bit of damage. You'll see later. Uh, it goes... It goes pretty hard. This is a very fun fight. This whole system. So this is an actual Everwood. This is a guild quest. It's not quite level 100, but it's close. It's like in the 90s. It had a Velocidrome that I had to kill, which is in, a, in some ways, I think people used to value quests like that. Your main target, not that blue cut coup is an especially dangerous one, will end up having slightly less health if it's a multi-monster quest. And obviously Velocidrome was pretty much flint flinch lock the whole time, even with this kind of bad hammer. Okay, so here he is being a Khonshu Mancer, like Pyromancers or Geomancers, Hydromancers. Uh, Yan Kutku has the ability to summon and use Khonshu as a weapon. Really interesting. I mean, you'll bounce off the Khonshus. He'll hit you with the Khonshus. Stuff like that. Uh, broke his head just now. He has some exclusive drops that you can only get by breaking his head. The ears? Forget if oracles are exclusive, but you gotta you gotta break the head. Modern Matsuner doesn't have too much of that. Pretty much everything getting me attained is either a carve or a quest reward. I guess they wanted people to feel a little less frustrated, but it, it feels better when you gotta work hard for something, I think. So here he is exhausted. Just as I said earlier, he could summon Khonshu to attack. 
He can also just find them in the ground to eat when he's exhausted. <laughs> Everywhere a snack. Brianne Kutku. I think that's really cool. I think that whole animation's really interesting. I think it's horrific that he'll just swallow them whole. I don't know anything about actual bird anatomy. But I mean, I guess we've all seen like seagulls and stuff swallowing things that they probably shouldn't be able to. I have no idea what it's like in their stomach. By the way, here's his flying attack. I had nearly full life there. Can't shoot out. <laughs> and he shot a fireball at me for the BM disrespect. Amazing, man. Mind you, the armor is not fully upgraded. I, For this series, I'm putting like just a couple armor spears into things that I don't think I'm actually going to use. I'm not going to max it out just for one demonstration and demonstration hunt. That big fireball attack is actually easier to avoid in 4U than it is in Freedom Unite. Freedom Unite, I feel like it hits much closer to him. And so you have to be a lot more careful. Other interesting thing that used to happen a lot more in the older games, very deliberate tells when a monster is ready for capture. Uh, Yan Kuk, who of course folds back his ears. So it's immediately apparent when he's ready for capture. Love that. Sad that you know, I got I got yelled at in comments for complaining. I'll just say ye modern era monster hunter rather than giving all those tells like that. I mean, occasionally you'll get a limp. You just get a little icon on your screen saying, all right, ready for capture. Throw an animation on, make a noise, have them change a move or something. It's a lot more immersive. It feels a lot more like hunting rather than just an icon glowing. Great fight, honestly. I mean, ranked low, but fun. Blue Kaku Cortex, an outer shell even thicker than a regular carapace. The desire of artisans everywhere. Blue Kaku Shard, a super thick blue Kaku scale. As blue as the ocean, it's considered nature's masterpiece. And what a masterpiece Blue Yan Kaku was, you know? I mean, you would think, oh no, they're bringing back this dumpy entry tier monster into Monster Hunter 4. Like, what a waste. That could have been something so much better. But honestly, a, a genuinely good fight. A lot of fun, a little tricky if you're undergeared. Obviously, if you're all geared up, he's, he's not going to be that hard. Up next... Great Izuchi. Got a neat gimmick, I guess. But not as neat of a gimmick as you guys do. Thank you for watching. I love you. Goodbye.